first welcome everyone to upgrade your loyalty program a deep dive into replatforming webinar um, again i'm andy nemes co-founder and vp of north america here at antevo today we are really excited to share with you insights on why evolving your loyalty program is key to your success we will talk about why businesses usually decide to replatform what needs to be considered during the process and also we have great experts here so they are going to share best practices and typical cases as well how to replatform let's see if go to webinar is working today and yes cool so um today i'm here with amazing experts and i'm going to hand it over to you timmy to introduce yourself real quick hi everyone i'm timmy gary from Ontario. i'm a senior business analyst here i'm with the company for 10 years now working on loyalty programs and actually i think i participate in more than 50 uh, replatforming or loyalty program in implementation projects. Nice to meet you and I hope you will have a good time with us. Now I'm handing over it to Kate. Hello, uh, I'm from our team at Concord, part of the decision science group. So I help uh, some of our loyalty clients with their analytics strategy and measurement. Uh, and then I will hand it over to Bethany. Welcome everyone to the webinar. I'm Bethany Hartley. I'm the Vice President of Analytics at Concord. And I've been in the analytics and measurement space uh, my entire career, so love measuring things like loyalty programs. Yeah, big welcome to our speakers. Let's dig into what we are going to talk about today. So we are going to cover three topics today. First, why, we are why businesses decide to replatform. We are going to hear some business and technical reasons as well. And second, we are going to talk about two types of replatform replatforming from a strategic perspective. And third, we are going to uh, talk about changing things. So strategically, what do you need to be mindful about um, when you are going to decide to, to do a replatforming project? And um, in the end, um, we are going to have a Q&A section. Um, we will have 20 minutes for that. And we will wrap up 10 minutes before the hour, so you will, you will have time to catch up before your next meeting. Um, to ask questions, there is a go to webinar panel uh, right uh, on the right, and you can see the label questions there. You can simply uh, type your questions over there at any time during the webinar today, and we will go through them during the Q&A session um, at the end. So let's dive in. And let's do a real quick introduction on, on, on both companies. Um, we are Antevo, a software service data-driven loyalty solution recognized um, as a best-in-class vendor by both Gartner and Forrester. I'm pretty sure that you guys are familiar with traditional loyalty programs. We believe that uh, loyalty is much more than giving points and discounts for the customers. And with our technology, we fight against the discount-driven culture that we are living in to provide um, a, an emotional loyalty experience for the customers and um, so customers will be will be more loyal to brands um, and uh, they will come back more uh, to you guys bethany i'm going to hand it over to you to introduce concord yes thank you Concord is a global consultancy. We uh, have locations around the globe. Uh, we have a, just under a thousand employees. We've been around for 20 years. And what we really focus on from a delivery perspective are what we categorize as intelligent experiences. So this is data-driven customer experiences. We're very focused on the data and the insights and making sure that that's what's driving what we're doing, as well as the platform side of things, making sure that everything that we build not only looks great, but also that it runs great because it's got a really strong IT foundation. Um, and that's what the focus on efficient operations really is. Thank you, Bethany. And we want to hear your thoughts. So we are going to do a poll as a, as a start. And um, I'm going to launch the poll and we are going to have the first question. Do you measure, the, how do you measure the array of the loyalty program? You have uh, three options, um, actually, Yes, you, you measure it. No, you don't measure it. And third, you don't know. So please vote. I see that many of you already voted, so I'm going to just uh, hang on for a few seconds. Okay, almost, almost getting there. Let's just wait for one or two more. That's perfect. So let's close the poll, and then we're interested to see the answer. Wow, 58% of you are actually um, 
actually measuring the ROI. That's pretty cool. We actually had a bet before the webinar on what the answer is going to be. And um, and we thought the the majority of you is not 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 measuring it. So this is uh, surprising and great. Uh, we, that means that we have an educated uh, audience today. So we are going to cover uh, some topics though how you can how you can measure success uh, today. Let me close the results and go back to the to the screen and hand it over to you, Timmy. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Um, we are starting the discussion with a, a nice uh, statistics that can show you that the tendency that Fluidity program owners doing revamping is increasing by the year by year. You can see that how much is changing from years to years. And revamping here is meaning that the program owners are changing the loyalty concept, which may leading to replatforming because replatforming is not always, of course, a must, but it can lead to this. And what can, what can be the reason behind this? This is what we will discuss in the next section. If you go and you hate it, please, a little bit. One more slide. We will collect some business reasons and technical reasons around this. The business reasons, uh, Kate will, dry, um, will explain to you some interesting things that typically lead businesses to do uh, replatforming in their business. So Kate, go ahead. Perfect. We can go to the next slide and got the details there. Uh, so here's are some of the common reasons that we see people reevaluating their loyalty platform. Um, the first one being negative ROI. And I, I think we see this kind of in two ways. Either one, you're not able to measure it, um, which it, it does seem like we have some folks on this call that are in that camp. Uh, and the other is that you are able to measure it and you're just not seeing the return you'd like to see. Um, and so it kind of goes hand in hand with the next point, which is maybe you're approaching your loyalty offers um, in the way that doesn't work for your business. Um, so it could be that it's uh, too heavily focused maybe on discount type offers um, instead of promoting incrementality, kind of upsell and cross sell your products. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a platform that would support strategies that are really going to work for your business. And I think these next three really go together um, with kind of a, a continuous learning and, and optimization culture around your loyalty program um, that you really want to be able to, to test new ideas and, and quickly so that you can adapt your business and you know cut things that aren't working and, and continue to, to grow. Um, so you want to make sure that your platform is able to do experimentation um, and in a, a kind of agile way. Um, and with that, you want to be able to have that segmentation so you can test across different audiences um, and really approach your like offers with a personalization uh, mindset and focus. And this last one um, is you want to make sure that your loyalty program, one, fits within uh, the tech stack that your larger business has um, and also that it, it's prepared for where tech is going. So I know we're all hearing a lot about AI and, and specifically generative AI. Uh, has a lot of potential for um, you know, what you could test with content and, and copy and things within your offers. Um, and you want to make sure that you have a platform that's going to support those new technologies. And if we go to the next slide, um, we have a couple of examples of projects that you know, we've worked with clients on. And these are the sort of things you might want to consider. Could your platform support these types of projects? Because it could have a lot of return for your business. Um, so this first one, uh, we operationalized 15 machine learning models um, to support personalized recommendations for offers. Um, and to give you a little extra context, we were able to do that within six months. Um, so when we talk about having a platform that can support that in a, in a timely way that you can really make these changes quickly, um, it can be done. We have done it. We want to make sure you have a platform that can do it. And for that uh, a client and ended up tripling their upsells and doubling their cross sells and had a really great impact for their business. Um, this next one, uh, we were able to quantify the risk to conversion um, from password errors. Uh, so I know we're going to talk about this in more detail later on, but really making sure that you're thinking about measurement so that you can monitor your user experience and make sure, um, like in this case, if you get locked out of your password too many times, or maybe you're really losing out on a lot of revenue there and that's something that might be 
um, a technical fix that you could do. But you would need to have that measurement in place to know that that's going wrong. Um, and so for them, that was a $50 million revenue risk just from um, the errors they were encountering there. This next one really is all about personalization. So establishing ROI for that one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one-to-one -one offer optimization. So do you have the data in your platform that you can activate at that level? And do you have attribution back to that, that level of detail for revenue or redemption rates or whatever your KPI might be for your business? Do you have it at that level? And again, for them, that was half a million dollars of revenue. So it really, I want to stress that can have such a big impact if you're not able to measure these things. Um, and the last example we have here is establishing an experimentation program um, for one of our, our loyalty clients and uh, really helping them figure out what they want to test, how can you set it up to get meaningful insights at the end of that test, and then also making sure you have that process in place that once you've identified your winner, using that information and making sure that you're making the changes once you have those learnings. Um, and for them, it kind of was focused in the kind of CRM messaging space, which I think is what comes to mind maybe first for some of these things, um, but also for their, their site user experience. Um, and for them, that was a, a $9 million difference. Um, and so this is kind of what we see from a, a business side. Um, and I'll hand it over to Timmy to kind of go into the technical side. Yeah, basically, Kate touched a lot of things that uh, driven technical reasons also. So always first, we, we always discuss that business is actually the main driver. And uh, business, um, actually the business experience, which is resulting in technical issues on, on the solution that you currently have, is actually um, driving by platform experience that you cannot do that agile segmentation and exploration that experimentation that Kate has just talked about or the business people has not very cool uh, control uh, options on the platform maybe they cannot grant access levels to different members from their organizations um, or the other things that we frequently hear is that not easy to do changes. Kate also emphasized, uh, made a really strong point on this one that it's really important that you need to be able to respond to the changing customer needs and a strategy that you need to deliver. Uh, and you shouldn't rely on the solution providers uh, tech support, for example, or you, on your own IT team to do this. And you never should uh, opt in for workarounds because that's always making you lose money and cost for you a much and not not enabling you to act in time basically this strongly connected to limited platform capabilities as well usually that people not really like that they cannot have the use cases or launch new loyalty campaigns programs or maybe have the AI option that Kay just mentioned and uh, which would help you to achieve the goals and the last one is basically cutting the budget. So if the marketing department doesn't have any more, any more resources for paying people, for the tech people, or more marketing managers to handle the program itself, uh, sometimes it's turning into, in the end, in a one-man show. And because of that, the program, the platform itself, should be really easy to maintain, to handle, and uh, set up the things that you would like to run. So these are the typical technical reasons. And I think now we have a poll around and the three platforming as well. Exactly. Let me launch this real quick. And we are going to have another poll. And the poll is focusing around three platforming. Which option would you feel confident proceeding with? Select one of the following. Keep the program log logic as it is, or implementing little changes, or do a big, big bang and, uh, and, and a full revamp. So let's see. I see many of you are voting. Let's wait for a few seconds more. OK, almost 50% voted. I'm going to close the poll now, and let's see the results. I'm interested to see the results, actually, on this. Imp implement little changes. OK, we won this one, right? Uh, we, we thought you guys are going to give this answer. and. Um, and we are going to hear lots of advice on how you can actually uh, do these little uh, changes by optimizing the program. So let's go back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, actually, this is something where I'm jumping in and then Concord team will cover for you some interesting uh, cases. Uh, so replatforming can happen, as you could see in, in the pool as well, you are implement, you're keeping everything as is. This is option B that we frequently seeing actually. And there are things when option B where you basically do bigger or smaller changes, let's say uh, this can uh, rate it from op small optimizations to a bigger uh, program change basically. Option A is a really good uh, option for you um, if you would like to focus on the stack tech stability. So you would like to ensure that all the data flows, uh, all the softwares which is in your ecosystem are communicating well and seems seamlessly with other uh, solutions, the loyalty solutions that you have in place. Of course, it can support for you a quick rollout because marketing team doesn't need to decide a lot of things. You don't need to spend a lot of time in business scoping. So this can uh, provide you a quick and easy uh, launch and ensuring that the foundations, the tech technical integrations are, are safe, let's say it like that. And after you switched over to a better provider, let's say it like that, and you build up this uh, strong foundation, you can plan ahead that, okay, then what to add, what to change quickly after the MVP launch, basically. Usually this concept really good for a quick MVP rollout where you quite basically limited on uh, resources a bit and technical is more important for you than uh, the logic itself. Option B is usually our, from experience, those customers are picking this one where the program is not performing at all for them that they are running at the moment. The customers are not engaging with it really well. Uh, even the revenue which is generated by the program is close to zero or maybe it's negative. So instead of uh, doing as this concept uh, re-implementation, you may change, you may think about to launching something totally new and closing uh, the previous program. This will require a lot of uh, marketing effort from your side, from business side, planning, making a lot of decisions. And of course, if you are introducing new uh, business cases, basically in the loyalty program, new mechanics that will require extra technical resources from your end as well, because you need to investigate how, when, what data, which software needs need to be enabled at use case. Of course, the other big difference between the two, that option A, no customers will notice it, that you will changing something behind the scene. So that's also kind of a safe one. In the second option, of course, they will change it and then you need to communicate it. But if you go to the next slide, we can see uh, what can influence actually further whether you are changing option A and B. And Kate has here a really good insight about timing and resources. Yeah, so I know for our experience, we see a lot of people considering the timing of when they should be making these sort of larger changes to their program. Um, and so an example for us is, you know, I work a lot with the financial services group and tax season is so critical to their business. Um, and so they think about that both from that is a, a big, you know, user impact because that's when people are, are using their technology and their loyalty program the most. Um, and so you don't want to throw them off during that business critical time of year. And also from a people standpoint, a lot of their technical resources are already, you know, taken up for other projects. And so from that perspective also, it, it doesn't always make the most sense. Um, so if you have a seasonal business like that, that's definitely something to consider. And the other thing that we see is, you know, picking your markets that you might be able to test changes in first. Um, so if you have kind of a five, you know, your largest markets, maybe wait and do those as the, the final rollout and start your testing in, in some smaller markets and kind of see what feedback you get and how it impacts the users. And kind of uh, work out any bugs that you might come across before you roll it out broadly to all of your users. Um, and then I will hand it back to Timmy for the other considerations here. Better performing program versus tech stability. I already talked about this actually, and uh, later on this presentation, a Concord team will also share with you some great examples how to ensure that you are measuring uh, not just the ROI, but actually the use cases that you are having. And that can help, the use case measurement can help you actually uh, during the replatforming and deciding between those two options too, because you need to ensure that what you, if you build a good program, you have 
uh, enough data and understanding what you need to do differently. Uh, but besides this, well, the other thing which is really important and uh, nine out of 10 uh, of customers usually doesn't have this, is that they don't have documentation about the current Fluidity program they have and neither the new one uh, that they would like to launch. And what I mean by that, that they don't know in detail their use cases. So you don't need to imagine it in a way that you need to have a, I don't know, 100, wrong, 100 page long documentation about how the Lottie program should work. But you need to know that how the customer experience will look like, what customers need to do, for example, how a point earn journey look like, how a point spend journey look like, uh, what's happening if uh, if point expiration is happening? What communication can go on and go out and so on and so on? And it's really important because these use cases will help you basically uh, to pick which uh, solution provider would be the best fit for you if you are providing them this input. And if we go to the next slide, you will see um, some really simple use case documentation, which is basically defining the steps that the member can go through in order to redeem their points for a coupon and then getting a communication about this. And besides having documenting down this from a, an experience perspective, it's also always a plus for the platform provider as well that you are about to choose um, to see what points, what data and which software should provide that data for you. Uh, typically, the first point you can see member has enough points. This is something usually the backend so a loyalty software should be able to provide you to your front end where the consumer is basically interacting with the loyalty program. And this is back and forth communication should happen between the systems through this through board uh, journey. And it's always good if uh, the technical people on your end is also aware of this and you have ready this information on, at your side because you can go to the different platform providers and can say, hey, this is the use cases, this is the data I need, this is how you should communicate to my systems. So can you do it or not? And besides this, uh, measuring the success of these use cases, this is something that Bethany can explain you to better because that's always really important here. Yes, just like the use cases should drive your platform choice, your use cases should also drive your measurement. And if we want to hop to the next slide, we can talk a little bit more about what this will look like because well, it's great to have these nicely documented use cases. As you talk to people in your organization, you won't necessarily have everybody describe perfect use cases to you. So for across the stakeholders who are going to be invested in this program, you're going to hear inputs to your measurement plan in a lot of different forms. So some people may give you a very nice use case. They might say, we need to drive transactions on weekdays. And, and that's very precise. Other people might give you business questions. We need to understand like the impact of an irrelevant offer on lifetime value. And so from a measurement perspective, we know we need to answer that, but it's not necessarily quite tied to a use case just yet. You might have other people who give you an analysis need. Well, we need a standard ROI metric for all of our email campaigns. And that's another input into this measurement plan. You might people you have might have people who talk about the access that they're going to need to the data that underpins the loyalty program. So they might say, I need to be able to self-serve past offers performance by segment in real time. You will have other people who will put out their big hypotheses, such as our most loyal customers' buying patterns are not influenced by discounts. And your challenge from a measurement perspective comes in with either needing to prove out or refute that hypothesis. And then finally, you'll also have stakeholders who just throw out challenges. Things like, we need to ensure our customers' messages are geographically relevant. And so when we think about how to put all this together from a measurement perspective, the challenge is really how to take all of these different inputs that we're going to get in different formats from different people and, and make it concise and, and understandable so that that way we can get to the proper measurement to really understand what we're doing. So on the next slide, we'll take a look at what that output can be when we pull together all of these different inputs. This is an example of the components that we would look for in a loyalty measurement plan. So the measurement plan should start at the highest level with the business goals. As an example, maybe the goal is to grow frequency among existing customers, particularly weekday frequency. Maybe that's where we really think 
we're going to get that incrementality. Um, maybe a different goal or an, a second business goal would be to increase the average order value by getting one more item into each cart. We need to be really clear on what we're expecting the program to do for us. And once we're really clear on that, then we can establish what our KPIs are going to be. Our KPIs are our key performance indicators. They are the metrics that tell us if we are meeting our goals or not. They're help, the metrics we're going to trend to say, are we moving up, are we moving down? Not every metric that we're going to measure is a KPI. The KPIs are really those front and center metrics. So we need to be really clear about defining those. If it's revenue, well, what does that mean exactly? Maybe it means the order value. Well, do we count discounts in that? Do we not count discounts in that? Um, so we wanna get really precise with our measurement plan around that. We also need to pull out the key segments that we're going to be looking at from a measurement perspective. If we've got different loyalty tiers, that's probably a key segment that we need to look at. If we're going to be testing different offer types, that's another key segment that we're going to want to have front and center in our measurement. And then once we've, we've established those things, we can really start to build out our business questions around that. So based on the goals based on the KPIs, we can figure out, well, what do we need to answer from a measurement perspective? We might want to know which customers will never buy more, no matter how much we message to them. We might want to understand if a BOGO offer or a free, free shipping with minimum purchase offer is better at increasing average order value. These are the types of things that we want to measure out over time. And then once we've established all that, we can really put together our business and our technical requirements. So our business requirements, there will be lots of these. Um, there will be very precise, such as compare the incrementality and average order value by offer type. And then from a technical perspective, we'll have a very detailed description of exactly how we're going to do that from an analytics perspective. Those technical requirements, we may be ready to do all of those today. Hopefully we're ready to do a lot of those. There may be some things that we don't have, and that's okay too. We don't want uh, perfection to be the enemy of good, and, and we don't want to get stuck not moving forward. So we will also probably have open issues from a measurement perspective, things that we need to establish from a baseline um, perspective in order to then measure ourselves against. And if you go to the next slide here, basically you can think about when you are deciding that uh, strategically what you'll be mindful about when you're deciding whether to do any changes in the program, you need to focus on three factors, your data, your customers and your competitors. For each of them, I will share some examples and the Concord team will drive you how it's affecting the measurement planning that just Bertani just explained to you. Your data, for example, we recently had a customer who changed their loyalty concept logic from a coupon-based program to a points-based program and they kept the birthday coupon uh, in their loyalty program beside, uh, despite the fact that the program mechanics, the board program mechanics around it has changed. The reason behind it that they measured that this coupon driving results for them increasing the purchase frequency and the AOA so they obviously they needed to keep it when it comes to your customers you need to consider that what things that customers cannot live without in the loyalty program one of our customers for example offered free shipping for everyone who signed up to the program this sounds costly and actually it was cost for them as well a lot but they thought about to keep it in the end uh, because uh, if they would take it away, the customers were so would be so disappointed on this that they would actually leave the company. They also did a survey around this actually to to validate this uh, assumption. And the last one, your competitors, this you can look it in two way, either to what is standard on your market, so what is something that all the customers are needing uh, from everywhere, is, and it's kind of a must have to have in your program, like typically like these sign up uh, coupons and benefits. And the other thing that you can look at, look in your competitors with the eye of how you can be different uh, compared to them. What is the mechanics that maybe make you stand out and still deliver a really good customer experience? And now Kate and Bethany will add you uh, measurement uh, consideration for these points as well. Yeah, so just like Timmy was saying, I mean, having this information is so valuable to you. So ideally, like starting with your data, if you have that historical performance to look back and see, you know, that birthday coupon has really been working, that is great. Um, but if you haven't had that measurement yet, um, or even if you do, as you're looking at your new platform, you want to make sure that you have a way to tie whatever your KPI that you landed on from your measurement plan 
um, attributed back to your offers. So whether that's, again, it might be revenue, it might be redemption rate, uh, maybe you need to know your order value and different things. You wanna make sure you can get that back to the offer level um, so that you can get these sort of insights and know what's working well. Um, and then I'll pass to Bethany to talk about the, the customer's piece. Yeah, that knowing our customers and what they can't live without, of course, we we would always recommend experimenting into some of these major changes. If you are thinking of taking away a legacy benefit or something that's kind of been a hallmark of the program, or if you're thinking of changing some of those things, testing into that can be a great way to make sure that we don't um, take a misstep. Um, but if we aren't able to test, or maybe even as part of the test measurement, one of the things that we should always consider there is the great data that you'll probably have out of your customer care center. So if you start um, changing some things within the program, typically your most loyal customers, um, the ones that this program is really designed around, are going to let you know about that. So monitoring the call volumes alone, even if people aren't dissatisfied, if they have a lot of questions about the changes, that can be very costly um, from the call center operations perspective. So we want to make sure that we're mindful of that and we're thinking about that. Um, even aside from call volume, um, customer satisfaction is the call center is a great way to get an early read on that. And if we understand that um, a benefit that changed or if we understand that there, there was an offer that was only offered to a subset of the, the program um, and people found out about it and, and they're upset about that and they wanna know where their offer is, things like that, um, we can very quickly get ahead of that if we've got a great read on the data coming out of the call center. And for the competitors, you know, you may be um, trying a new strategy because you wanna keep up with what's going on in your market. Um, but something to be mindful of is as you're as you're taking on that new strategy, you may need new data to inform it. Um, and so you might need to consider what the implications might be for data onboarding into your new platform or even to your existing platform. And is that data readily available? Is it at the level of detail that you need? Um, can it be easily ingested into your platform? Um, and so as you're thinking too about the timing of should you do all of your changes at once or maybe a phased approach, um, this may play into that as well. And then I think we can go to the next slide. Um, and really the, the biggest consideration is thinking about your user's experience all through um, their interaction with your loyalty program. And we really want to showcase some examples of are you thinking about each of these steps and are you considering measurement in each of these steps? Um, so when your member has enough points, um, do you have a read on how many points your members typically have um, and what sort of rewards that they're eligible for at that level? Uh, when they click to claim a reward, are you getting a pulse on how many rewards are being claimed? Um, maybe especially of people that are eligible. Do they know that they're eligible? Is there more messaging you could do to get that engagement up um, so people are looking to see what rewards they could claim? Um, and kind of hand in hand with that, you know, can you see the time from when someone joined to when they got enough points to when they were claiming that reward and see if that timing is um, what you would hope it would be for engagement with your program? And then once they've clicked on that reward, um, they should see those points deducted from their total. Uh, and I think this is a great place to just monitor that the technology is doing what it should be doing. <laughs> so we should see that point deduction, but that's a good thing to measure to make sure that that actually is happening as expected. Um, and maybe another place too to see, are they eligible for additional rewards after that point? Is there additional messaging that could go out around that? Uh, and then once they've claim their reward, the points have been deducted, they should see that coupon. Similar to the point deduction, I think this is a great place just to have that kind of quality check to see what the views of the coupon looks like. Um, are, we, are we sure that people are able to access that coupon in the way we expect? Um, and then you have that follow-up email with all the details of, of how to use it. And I think this is kind of the most exciting place <laughs> from a measurement perspective of one is, are those emails being delivered? Are they being open? Um, but also a great place to start doing some experimentation with the content and the frequency of what you're sending as that follow-up. And you know, different types of users might want different types of follow-ups. And so I think you can really 
do some uh, test and learn in this stage especially. And I think we can move to the next slide. Yep, where we were talking about that after you deciding whether you going with an as is uh, concept implementation with a new solution provider or you are changing and everything, basically your loyalty concept and the solution provider as, as well. If you have decided this, then you still have two important topics that you need to discuss or investigate internally. One of them is data migration and data quality and the other one is communication plan. For data migration, for technical perspective, two things uh, you need to consider which approach will be fitting best for you to achieve your goals. One of them is full data migration, basically. This is one way how to get into the legacy loyalty data into the new system. This is required if you would like to have all the historical data in the new solution provider, and you will also using this data it's really important that always migrate information that actually you will build up on loyalty logic in the new program. Like if you would like to keep uh, some kind of smart segmentation that only members who didn't purchase in the last three months should have a certain offer in the new pro program, then definitely you need backdated uh, migration. And this requires usually developer resources, not from your end actually, but from the solution provider because they need to create scripts and do some kind of data transformation, data cleaning, data mapping actually between the two systems. And your uh, tech team needs to assist to this, but the majority of their job will be done by the solution provider. Grant feathering is actually uh, an easier and um, less, let's say, time consuming and cost consuming way of bringing over data from the previous provider to the new one. This usually happens when you don't need backdated information. So historically, you don't want to create any kind of segmented logic in the loyalty program. The only thing you need is that, for example, demographic data of your members like birthday, age, gender, country, and so on, which is not we don't need to know when this uh, information came into the system. We just need to know these characteristics of the members. So you're able to run uh, ongoing kind of campaigns again, like birthday campaign uh, and so on. But of course, this also has some business parts that actually for this case, if I remember right, Kate, you will talk about. Yes. Um, so for the business side of things, this is really a great opportunity to do that data audit and see what data is valuable to you. So what are you making the most use of in your existing system? Does it make sense to bring over? Is there any data you haven't had that you want to bring on? Um, because it's the, the right time to do it all at once. Um, and I really can't stress enough how helpful it is to do these data audits, because um, I think a lot of times we see that people, you know, do this really deep review of their data when they first onboard, but you don't have that regular check-in to review, is it still valuable? Are we using it? Is it still clean? Um, and so an example from one of our projects was that we did one of these data audits as they were doing a big system migration, um, and they found a, a reduction of 5 billion events because there was some duplicate tracking and things that they were able to clean up. Um, and so as you're kind of evaluating some of these pieces already to see what makes sense in your new system, it's really a good time to take a look at what am I using? What isn't as clean as it could be? Um, and in this example, that reduction of events had real cost savings. Um, so something to consider there. And when we talk about the communication plan, the second point here, from technical perspective, if you do changes, even small or big ones, that will impact the customer experience and they will notice that you did some changes. So even if you do a silent launch of the new incentives or uh, loyalty mechanics that you have, that's fine. But because you would like to ensure that technically is, everything is working, there is no last remaining bugs uh, in the new program, that's fine. But after the silent launch, which can be usually two weeks up to one month maximum, after that you need to communicate. Uh, these changes because actually your goal is also that customers need to be engaging with the new mechanics that you have created in the program. This is because in the end, this is how you will 
I figure out that actually whether it's working for you or not. And this is where actually Bethany can have add to you even more extra valuable insights. Yeah, communication is, is another great place to measure. Uh, we can measure the impact of the communication. We can measure um, if people are, are reading that communication, if they're understanding it. We can, again, look at the, the customer care center to, to see if our communication is effective there. Um, and we can also experiment. Um, and that's the example that we have here is if you have different tiers within your loyalty program, you might have different levels of engagement and understanding and understanding of your existing program. So depending on the level of change that you're making, um, some of your customers may notice that or be more concerned about that than others. And so this is another opportunity to really test into that and think about what information you're sharing, how much detail you're going into, how you're positioning it um, from a, from a you know, a benefits messaging perspective, and you can really understand the best way to communicate with not only your, your program as a whole, but really for those different customer segments. And I think we are done, right, for the content. Thank you so much, guys. And um, now we are great getting into one of the most interesting part of today's webinar, besides the content, obviously, is Q&A time. And I would like to ask you to, ask questions, we still have some room for ask questions um, by going to the right part of the panel and under questions, you can uh, just uh, send your questions, hit the uh, press button, uh, send button, sorry, and after that, um, we are going to answer that. So let's go with the first question. Uh, Michelle is asking, how long does a replatforming project usually takes? Timmy, do you want to answer this? <laughs> It actually depends on depends on uh, what type of replatforming or let me re let me restart it. It depends on how your how big is replat your replatforming project because we can talk about big digital transformation projects where you are changing basically all the providers that you have uh, working with that can take. Uh, from six months uh, up to even a one year, depending on uh, all the providers, the number of the pro providers. But if you have a uh, well-documented, uh, well um, assessed, you did a, your assessment right regarding the loyalty solution, the new one that you'll be using, and you have your business scope ready, your technical team is also ready to support and the benefit actually that we're doing replatforming is that you are already knowing how to implement the loyalty program. So doing it a second time will be always quicker. It's just that whether you are doing again changes or not that can implement this one. So it's really hard to give you a, a final answer on this one that how long usually it takes. It really depends on many factors basically. But it should be quick if you are well prepared. <laughs> My favorite answer, it depends, right, to me. Thank you for that answer, though. I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, next one, what are the common KPIs to consider for measuring a loyalty program? Bethany, Kate, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, I'll jump in here. With KPIs, it, it really goes back to those use cases that you've laid out for your program. Um, but I would say they typically will center around incrementality. You wanna make sure that as you're measuring this, you're not just looking at revenue from these customers because they're probably your higher revenue customers anyway. Um, you're not necessarily just looking at how often they purchase because they're probably your most frequent purchasers anyway. So you don't just wanna be comparing your loyal customers and your loyalty program members to the rest of your customer base, you want to make sure you're really getting to that heart of incrementality that if you were trying to drive somebody to make one more purchase, that you're really looking for that one additional purchase. If you're trying to drive somebody to add a couple of things to um, a basket already that you're looking at that increase in the average order value. So I would say um, typically it's all about measuring exactly what you wanted the customer to do and making sure that we're really looking for that lift. Thank you. Timmy, we do have a question for you. The platform mm -hmm. is working with B2B customers as well. Are there any use cases that support B2B customers, not only B2C? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, we, of course, it depends on the industry that you are in. Uh, we are working in two uh, industries. Hospit one is um, one of them is hospitality, and uh, the other one is agriculture, where we're working with B2B concepts at the moment. Uh, and actually, we had uh, also automotive. So sorry, it's free. Um, 
Yes, uh, but it also depends on what kind of B2B we are talking about, like a business to business, like retailer to liter retailer uh, kind of concept, or you are talking about, uh, you know, like um, not really businesses, but, but for example, in hospitality, you can have um, agents who are, for example, booking, who are booking um, through special services, um, hotel nights or vacations, for example, this is one of our customers, what they are doing, and they are based Basically, the agents are hired by an agency, travel agency, for example, and they would like to in, 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 in encourage these agents to sell more um, nights or vacation spots, for example. And what they do is they are co coming up special promotions that they need to be able to um, do more bookings. The more bookings they do, the more uh, benefits they can get. Of course, this uh, needs to be validated. So. Uh, to avoid any cheating in the system, let's say it like that. So this requires uh, data validation. In this case, that the travel is really happened, you need to be able to check it back with the third party. So it also depends on what kind of um, business you are operating and what kind of um, personas you need to work it actually. And what the the actions you would like to drive? It's always sales, of course, but uh, always you also need to think about that how to reward these members. And usually for these kind in this scenario that I just mentioned to you, uh, a reward a third party rewards are the best options to go with. For example, any other further use cases? I think we can email it to you because I believe we will check with our marketing team what we have uh, use cases on this one that we can share. Let's do that. Um, another one, do you have use cases with no monetary rewards from Nuria? Maybe Timmy, you can answer this. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh, actually really typical because now nowadays nobody wants to focus on only just discounts. Um, no monetary rewards can be experienced, price rolls, claims that customers can do, some engaging actions and can encourage them to spend their points. And on, on the other side, it's, it's good for you because you are um, giving something away which has a high value in the eye of the customer, but maybe it's not costing for you that much. Uh, that can be even a badge, for example, which can be a good status symbol for members that if they do something, you can reward them with something that some badge that they can, that visualizes for them a status and maybe unlocking for them uh, special services. So yes, monetary benefits are really uh, frequently happening. We have a couple of use cases for this. Uh, depending on the type of the, the non-monetary uh, service, but usually uh, the typical way how loyalty systems is handling this is that we are flagging uh, those members who are eligible for this, and in the end, you or either a partner who is delivering this non-monetary benefit is, is delivering it to the end user. Cool, Timmy, and uh, I know you talked a lot. All of you did an amazing job, so we have one more question for you guys, and this is going to be an easy one. What is your favorite revamped loyalty program? Each one of you need to answer their favorite one. I talk so much, so Bethany or Kate needs to start now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll kick it off here. I, I, I would... Um, I probably have a few industry favorites depending on the industry, but I'll point to Starbucks as I think um, just an exceptional loyalty program because I've talked today a lot about incrementality and personalization and testing. And I think it's just a, a stellar example of that where the rewards are all about if you're a morning customer, it's getting you to come in in the afternoon. If you're a drink only customer, it's getting you to buy a bakery item. Um, so they really are good at those personalized recommendations in support of incrementality. Kate? Um, I think I would go with Subway. Um, and I say this because they've been targeting me recently. <laughs> but I, I really think it's great that they are able to make the user experience a lot easier if you sign up for their rewards program. They'll save all your things and they, if you want to do it for pickup. So they've given me like additional, um, I don't know if functionality is quite the right word, <laughs> but additional perks. And it really isn't a, a monetary discount a lot of the time, which kind of to the last question, it's just making the experience better. Um, so I really like what they've done. Yeah, it's really part of the customer experience. I I, I, I feel you. Timmy? Yeah, for me, I, I'm picking a recent customer that I just learned how their program is working is Yeah Welly from the UK. Um, they have 
a totally non-monetary um, approach into the program. There are a lot of gamified experience in the LIT program, prize years, prize draws, they even support donations, branded uh, merchandise uh, products that you can get from them. And the only thing you need to do is to upload in the coupons uh, or codes that they are selling in their dietary products because they are selling your cords. So that's really engaging and fun. And the ex experience of the members are so seamless how they have built it on the front end that, that I really love uh, what they have created. Perfect. Thank you so much for, for all of these answers. And thank you for joining today. I would like to thank Timmy, Bethany, and Kate for the amazing um, content that you guys delivered uh, for today. And on the technical note, we are going to share the webinar um, with you in a follow-up email. And we really hope that you found the, the examples and all the know-how valuable in today's webinar. And we hope to see you in our upcoming next event. Bye, guys.